Well, I figured as long as I'm out today, I'll give a little information on what to ride when you're off-roading. I ride a Rokon Trailbreaker, so my requirements might be different from the people that ride four-wheelers. First thing you want to do is have a helmet. I'm a firm believer in them. Eye protection, too, whether you wear a full face or one with the mouthpiece, just get a good helmet. I'm not fond of them half helmets that just come down to your top of your ears. I don't think they give enough protection. But the type of helmet you get, that's your choice, just wear it. I go spend a lot of time back in a brush. Some people might think these are kind of silly to wear. A little roost guard. They originally set up for the racers to because the people in front of them were throwing stuff back. Banging them up pretty good. But they provide good protection when you take a fall. Good impact protection. And riding back in the brush with me, I'm always getting stabbed with branches and stuff. And they stop it. They're not heavy, pretty flexible. You can move around real good in them. They're ventilated, you're not going to work up much of a sweat. Well worth it. Yeah, a jacket. My requirements are different. I don't go road riding on the Rokon. But I want something to keep me from getting brush whipped. So a good heavy Cordura nylon jacket. This one has elbow pads built into it and shoulder pads, armor, whatever you want to call it. I like to have lots of pockets. You're always carrying stuff. You got to be deep enough to carry a cell phone or a GPS. And have zippers on. You don't want something, anything falling out. Snaps are kind of awkward to use. Zippers stay shut. Side pockets, same way. Have zippers on them. Something with an inside pocket. They're very handy. Also zipper shut. Because you don't want to be carrying your wallet and car keys in your pants pockets. You're going to end up going back on the trail to try and find them. Yes, it's a little hot. But you can get lighter weight ones. And these things have vents in them, front and back, so they're not that bad. Knee and shin guards. And you guys on the t that are zooming around need these for your falls and stuff. I'm not really zooming around on the Rukon, but. I do go a lot on rocks, and they help for that and take a fall. And back in the brush, keep you from getting whipped on. Getting a branch in the kneecap really hurts. And these things come all the way up to here, velcro around the back and bottom and then snap on with the elastic cord. They're well worth it. I used to ride for all my life, just about. Nothing but 11 inch steel toed logger boot. I thought that was great. One day I took a fall on some rocks and a bike landed on the boot. 
I lost the rest of the riding season. So, invested in these. Whatever type of boot you get, you know, that's your choice. I prefer something with a heel and a little bit of a tread. These are Alpine Star Tech 3s that the ATV sold. I've taken falls since then and they've held up pretty good. These are also wide enough at the top that you can slip the knee shin guard in there so you're armored from your toes to above your knee. They're not that awkward wearing. You might feel a little stiff at first when they break in. They're well worth it. You might start thinking that this stuff is too expensive. Well, I found out after my injuries that the deductible on my insurance was more than this stuff. So it's well worth the investment. Like I say, get the stuff for your type of riding. You don't have to get it all at once. But wear it. it Save me a lot of pain. Well, I forgot to mention gloves. There's all kinds of wear motorcycle gloves out there. You can get the fancy armored type. These are just some mechanics wear stuff with the rubber on the knuckles and fingers. They do for me. It's your choice what you get.